What is up, nerd friends? There is a new programming device out called the OTA. Let's have a look. You've all heard by now that the new wireless programming uh, dongle, device, module, however you want to term it, is out. This works with the all-new Hobbywing Link V2 app that just got released as well. So we're going to hook this up to an XR10 Pro G2 and run through basics, if you will. I have this speed control already set up and calibrated with a motor and a battery pack, so it is functional. All right, so basic connection of the OTA to the uh, speed control, because the wires are all black. You would think you could just plug it in either way. The plug fits both ways, but it's only going to work one direction. And on the top edge here you can see those little etchings that'll tell you the the orientation of the wire there's a minus a plus and a goofy little shape for signal those guys line up with those same markings that are, are on your speed control and the, the brass tabs i guess you will if you wanted to to make it easy the, the brass tabs go outward plug that into the dedicated programming ports okay, so you got everything plugged in right orientation you turn on the speed control your ota light comes on and then you open up your hobby wing link v2 don't forget you got to get the v2 app touch the link icon in the upper right hand corner and it'll bring you down a drop down list and it'll be the one that's hw dash something so you tap that it'll connect to the module and this i've connected once before so it already had the password but it lists the default password as 888 Eight, eight, six number eights. And on your main screen here, you have some options to pick from. Data log will show you, if your speed control has data logging, it'll show up here. If your speed control does not have data logging, this does not add it. So it has to be a feature of your speed control already. In the settings are the settings for the app. Firmware update is firmware updates for your speed control. And then parameters is where you actually are gonna get in and change the settings of your actual speed control. So let's jump into parameters. It takes a moment for it to connect to the EC, ESC. All right, and we are in. So this speed control is an XR10 Pro G2. This happens to be the Elite Edition with the red line. And you can go through and see all of your settings nicely organized as you would expect. And there is even the data log information is down in the bottom because this speed control has it. So you'll get some basic information there. Um, we have other videos about how all this works, but we'll jump through this real quick. Running mode is your operational parameters of the speed control, whether it has uh, forward and reverse, uh, forward and brakes, all that fun stuff. Max reverse force is how powerful the reverse is. So if you want limited reverse or stronger reverse, that's where you adjust it. Uh, voltage cutoff is for the LiPo batteries, and it's per cell here, so that's nice. And the... ESC and motor thermal protections are next. That's obviously the uh, thermal protection for the speed control or the motor. The motor thermal protection is only going to work if you use hobby wing speed control or motors that have the correct temperature sensor in them. A lot of other speed controls or motors that are out there, I'm sorry, have sensors and all that, but they're not the same temp sensors. You know, nobody or if they have any at all. So that's that stuff's not always going to be jiving or giving you any information, even though your speed control has that feature. BEC voltage is the power to the servo and the receiver. It's adjustable between two settings. You can have the remote on off. And what this is, is if you park and hold your brakes, if you don't have the reverse turn on, you can turn off the speed control. I tend to turn that off just in case. And the reason that is, is after in five minute racing or in club racing, you pull to the pitch, you can shut your car off and not have to reach down and turn it off and worry about it sort of thing. There is a full sensor in a hybrid mode. So the sensorless or hybrid mode is if you're using motors that have, I guess, less than great sensors, you're going to use the hybrid mode, or if you, you can even run in, in sensorless completely. Motor rotation. Not all of the speed controls have motor rotation available for them, only uh, XR8s and the XR10 Pro G2. So if you have the mid-motor cars, you may not find this setting in every one of the speed controls that you need, so keep that in mind. And what that does is it changes the rotation of the motor's forward operation. And there's a long story behind why all the speed controls don't have it blinky racing stuff like that but the mid-motor cars and some of the other stuff that's coming along xr10 pro g2 is the one that has that in it uh throttle rate is like your punch control the lower that is the slower the throttle responds the higher it is the more linear it is then you have a throttle curve here that is adjustable so you can get in here and dial in your own custom throttle curve from multiple points which i think is extremely cool so if you wanted to get crazy with some custom throttle curves you can do all of that right there uh, Throttle curve. And then neutral range is your dead band. How much space between throttle and, oops, 
excuse me, how much space between throttle and reverse there is. So if you got your drag brakes inconsistent, your throttle kind of jitters, or your brakes kind of flash, or your neutral light doesn't stay on, first thing you do is recalibrate the speed control, of course. But if that doesn't go away, you can increase your neutral range setting to help with that because it usually means your trigger pot's kind of wearing out or there's some jitter coming out of your radio system. Uh, coast is like a run-on situation. Generally speaking, you're going to run that at zero. Some of the oval applications or very slick track situations where if you let off the throttle and the car gets real skatey, Coast allows you to take some of that away where you add it in and the motor kind of runs on a little bit. So when you let off the throttle, it doesn't slow down. It's like the opposite of drag brake. PWM frequency is the the operational or PWM drive frequency is the operational frequency of the drive side of the motor. So the higher this setting is, the smoother the throttle response is going to be. You're going to get a little higher temperatures. The lower this is, the more aggressive the throttle response is going to be. And you're going to maybe cool things off a little bit. It depends on the loads, but the drive frequency is a good way to really smooth out and adjust the throttle. And check this out you can do a variable frequency that you can change through your throttle range. So let's say the front of your throttle feels real aggressive. You could set it to a high frequency and then you want the back end to feel, um, the back end of the throttle already feels soft. You can lower the frequency when you get to the high end of the throttle to bring the frequency back down. So very cool and unique. I ha and I'm not going to lie. I haven't got too much into that stuff because they try fine for me most of the time. But if you get into some scenarios where you want to really toy with things through your throttle range, that, that's pretty cool to have a custom drive frequency curve that you can set up. Now, softening value and softening range are two very cool settings. This is kind of like a current limiting or a traction control a little bit. It applies a value in a amount of softening. So the higher, the stronger. And then it has a range. Oh, get out of here. It has a range, which is the percentage of your throttle that it applies through. So if you're going like right to full throttle, softening doesn't really work. But if you roll through your throttle, you get as, you know, it'll be on for this percentage of the throttle and it turns off after that. So if you have very sensitive inputs or it's hard to get it to full throttle, you can use the softening to kind of help you manage where, where the power comes in a little bit then we get down to brake control lots of fun stuff with the brakes drag brake is your brakes at neutral it's not drag racing brake it's just automatic brakes that come on a neutral if you're doing drag racing you definitely never want to have drag brake the the high speeds the, the to the instant on brakes can be real bad but drag brake is used a lot by the racers it allows you to dial in some coast brakes so if you have you know good traction and stuff like that and you want the car to woe down going into corners you know that that's where you're at drag brake um Max brake force is your push brakes on the when you push the brakes on your radio, you can turn that up or down and then your initial brake force is how hard the brakes come on. It starts at the drag brake force. So if you have your drag brake set to 10%, your initial brake will be 10%. That way when you touch the brakes, it stays linear. Because if it's rolling along at 10%, and let's say your initial brake was lower and you touch the brakes, it might actually decrease the braking effect and make the car feel like it accelerated a little bit. And then the other side of that is, is you want the brakes to snap on a little bit harder. You can run higher initial brake to make them kind of catch and bite in a little more. Uh, brake rate control is a lot like the throttle rate it's how like if you're using the brakes a lot this controls how linear or one-to-one -one it is with your brake inputs the higher is more linear the lower is going to slow that down so if the brakes feel real twitchy to you, you that's a that's a way that you can adjust that brake curve much like the throttle curve you can customize all of that so that is very cool as well you can get down on your custom i mean some people are very finicky with brakes so it's nice to have some of this stuff available brake frequency a lot like drive frequency the higher the frequency the smoother it's going to be lower frequencies are going to be more aggressive and then we have brake control linear traditional or hybrid this is something the engineers have kind of um, toyed with and the racers have turned on and off and tried it. It's one of those personal preference things. What exactly it does, I'm not 100% sure, but most folks tend to run it in traditional or linear. They don't like to have it doing goofy stuff, but something if, if you're real into brake tuning, it gives you one more large adjustment to play with. And then the timing, we have several videos on timing, but the basics are boost timing. You have control over how much electronic timing it adds and how it activates the timing. You can do an auto section where it senses the RPM or acceleration and then puts the timing in accordingly, or you can adjust your own RPM parameters. So let's say you go 10, per, or 10 degrees of boost timing at these numbers. It'll apply though that 10 degrees evenly across the RPM range that you have set there. 
Boost can be a little bit tricky. We do videos on that, so watch those. I highly recommend it. We'll put some links down there. And the turbo timing is uh, a timing advance after you get to full throttle. So you still get an amount, and then you have how long after full throttle it comes on, how quickly it applies it, and then how quickly it takes it back out too. And that adds, you know, drivability and stuff like that. So again, you usually don't need to mess with timing too much, but in the world of drag racing and, and when you go club racing, you'll hear people talking about that stuff. Um, just make sure you're well aware of what you're getting yourself into when you start playing with the timing. And then down here, you can see the, the last data record that it has in there. You can export your profile, you can import profile. So this allows you to trade profiles and stuff like that. And then, of course, renaming your profiles for your own stuff, which can be helpful if you don't rename, you know, the speed control or your app or whatever. Or I'm sorry, if you don't rename your module, at least you can rename your profiles real quickly. So that if someone gets to the point where they're connecting to your stuff, they'll see that that name is different or you put your name, whatever. And they may be like, oh, that's not my speed control. I say that because there's been races where everybody's got these things out and they're all connecting to each other's speed controls they're making changes. It's not to their own speaking show, so just just be wary of that stuff. All right, so you back out of there, and you get back to the front, and you can go check for a firmware update. And as you can see, I do have a firmware update available. So it tells you, you know, the version, I guess you'd say, of your speaking show, what realm it falls into. Then it tells you what speaking control it identifies it at. It tells you what speaking control firmware is in there, and then what's available. And you can go forwards and backwards a couple versions just in case. So we're going to go to the latest one, and then we're going to hit update. And it's going to do its thing. It gives you a warning that says don't mess with anything because you don't want to mess with anything. And then it's going to do that for a bit. Upload complete. The ESC needs to be restarted. It automatically rest <laughs> it'll automatically restart itself. Please wait. Then you hit OK. And that should be all there is to it. Uh, we can go through the settings on the app just in case. Uh, there is a language setting, of course. Connection mode, Bluetooth, because this is a Bluetooth device, but the app will work with the old Wi-Fi Express, so you can go back to uh, Wi-Fi connection. Oh, well, it's connected right now, so it won't let us. And this is where you can change the name of the module if you want to, so that your module is unique to all the other ones. Change the password, and just in case there's firmware changes for that, that's where that gets done. About is where you can check for your app version and the database. So if you need to update your app without uninstalling it and reinstalling it, about is where you go do that. You'll tap on database and it'll allow that to happen. Help takes you to the website. Privacy policy tells you that we're not going to get rid of your information or any of that fun stuff. So you're welcome. Uh, you'll disconnect. ESC is disconnected. It'll tell you down the bottom. Then you'll exit and then you'll say press again to exit and you're out of there. Light stops flashing because it's not connected anymore. Turn it off. Unplug that. Well, there you have it. That's a quick rundown of the OTA, the settings that the XR10 Pro G2 has, as well as doing some you know basic operations, if you will. If you do have any questions, comments, and or concerns, please send us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next time.